The Chesapeake Bay is the largest estuary in the country and Maryland's crown jewel. From striped bass in the main stem of the bay to brook trout in the far reaches of the watershed, Maryland has a lot to offer. My brother and I are young anglers, and we feel a responsibility to fight for the health of these places because the future of these resources are in our hands. After spending time in these places, we found that the more time we spend in them, the more we know about them. And the more we know about them, the more we're willing to fight for them. This is the story of two seemingly unrelated fish that help us understand the connectivity within our environment and the importance of a healthy Chesapeake Bay watershed. My name is John Neely and I was born in Annapolis, Maryland, which is in the heart of Chesapeake Bay country. I'm in my third term as chair of the Maryland Sport Fisheries Advisory Commission, which represents the fishing interests of the more than 700,000 recreational anglers in Maryland waters. What makes the Chesapeake Bay so special? and it really is unique in the United States, is that it's composed of 43 million acres in six different states with millions of people who live here in the watershed. And it's incumbent upon us to protect it for future generations. The single biggest challenge, biggest problem facing the Chesapeake Bay is water quality. But there are other issues which all go into affecting water quality. Things like climate change. We have overdevelopment. We have nitrogen and phosphorus coming off of runoff from farms. Something as simple as hot water coming off asphalt during the hot summer months can be terribly destructive. And lastly, sedimentation and runoff. Both striped bass and wild brook trout need clean, healthy water to survive and to spawn. And so to fully understand a whole Chesapeake Bay watershed, we, need to, we do need to travel upstream. So I'm Dylan Taley. Uh, I'm a graduate student out at the University of Maryland Center for Environmental Sciences Appalachian Laboratory. When I'm not doing that, I, I try to get out here on the trout streams of Western Maryland as much as humanly possible. The Chesapeake Bay watershed, that water starts and, and flows through multiple states to get to the Chesapeake Bay. And so to understand the complete life cycle of the water, you have to see where it starts and what changes happen to it on its journey down to the bay. I come out here to the start of Appalachia and like, I just lose it. Like I roll over those hills and I'm like giddy. I can't sit still. I'm like so excited. When you're trying to understand the changes that are happening in a system, I think that having a species that's incredibly sensitive to change, that species is really useful for understanding the changes that are happening in watersheds around Maryland and the Chesapeake Bay. And, you know, if, if your stream can support brook trout, it's probably in pretty good shape. In streams that have more brook trout, it's really likely that there's less impervious surface and there's less acid mine drainage. And if I want my kids to come out here and catch the same beautiful brook trout that I'm catching right now, I think that we as a society need to work on addressing, you know, from the top down, from impervious surfaces all the way down to changes in temperature and precipitation. I think that it's a holistic management scenario that we need to work on um, so that, you know, the next generation can enjoy this. 
the way that we have. I'm Sean Kimbrough. I'm a fisherman and an author. I've uh, been fishing all my life, almost 60 years old. Been fishing the Chesapeake for a little over 15 years now. I've written three books about fishing the Chesapeake Bay. All my books have a, uh, a bent toward conservation and, uh, and especially environmentalism, stewardship. It's our, uh, our responsibility as fishermen to give back a little bit for all we enjoy. So there are times when you pull up to a fishing spot and you just know the fishing is going to be good. It's magical almost. You can see the ripples on the water. You know the bait is there. You know the fish are going to be there. And that's when fly fishing for stripers is so much fun because there's something about just laying that fly out there and watching it hit the water. And then the take. The fish grabs the line, set the hook, and then it's fish on. Once you get the fish up to the boat, that's the time to admire the fish, to enjoy the different colors of the fish and enjoy the lines and the stripes. As anglers, we tend to focus on our own little environments. For example, we're here on Kent Island in Chesapeake Bay, and most of my fishing is done 10 miles one way or the other here. And so it's very tempting for me just to focus in on the water quality issues and the bait issues and the fishing issues that are right here around me. But when you think about it, I'm just, you know, a little small area in the Chesapeake Bay compared to this giant watershed. Whether if you start up in Pennsylvania or in New York State, there's everything is a part of that ecosystem. Brook trout streams are so much fun uh, to get out there and wait, but they're so fragile. As those fish go, so go our stripers at Ken Island because we're all downstream. There's no doubt that striped bass are in decline. And it's not just any one thing that's causing them to be in decline. Granted, recreational fishermen are our own worst enemies sometimes. We keep too many fish, we kill too many fish. Uh, but it's not just recreational fishermen. Habitat is a big part of that. And if they don't have clean water to live in, they're not gonna live here. And I don't blame them for leaving, I would too. Stripers would rather eat a little bit and water they like than a lot and water that they don't like. We've been given so much here in the Chesapeake Bay. No matter where we're fishing in the watershed, we have such amazing opportunities here to fish. And I hope we appreciate it. I think a lot of people appreciate it, but because of those amazing opportunities, we have a responsibility to give back for some of that that we've been given. Chesapeake Bay may never return to the pristine waters that Captain John Smith and his crew saw when they traveled around the Chesapeake Bay in the early 1600s. But with citizen initiatives and conservation measures being enacted at the federal, state, and municipal level, I'm very hopeful about the future. The days of adversarial relationships are long gone. The time has come for partnerships, private and public partnerships between foundations and citizen initiatives where we have a bottom-up approach where citizen groups are coming together to demand that their elected officials help them clean up 
different streams and bodies of water. That's what gives me so much excitement for the future. There's no question but that brook trout in the tributaries and striped bass in the Chesapeake Bay are keystone species and they're such great markers for the progress we've made and yet they're a reminder of how far we have to go.